Today we're going to discuss the contents of our new Rip Pack Fast Packs. This side here is our low pressure side, low pressure low ball. Open it up. It's going to have our face piece inside of here. Our face piece doesn't have a nose cup in it or voice emitters. It's totally different than the ones that we use on the line. It's got a handle here that we can use to get over the top ahead of our victim. It also has pull tabs here that we can pull uh, to tighten up. It also has a carabiner here on the end for attachment to our victim. It has about a two foot of hose on it. Inside of here there's a Velcro attachment for our EBSS block. It's got about approximately a six foot hose on it here. The other side here is high pressure, high pressure, high T. Pull it inside of here is our universal RIT connection. It's got about five feet of hose on it. It's got a flashlight attached to it. You can turn on on here on the end so you can see it attached to the end of or inside of our SCBA. There's an external gauge on it here. It's got an audible alarm that sounds with 25% of the air left in the cylinder. We also have a pickoff strap here that we use for the handle. It's got two ease hooks on the end of it. You can use these to convert a pack. We'll show a video of that. Also on the end here is two ease hooks that we can use to attach this pack to the attachments on an SCBA and we'll show a video on that as well. All right, we're gonna go over how to properly store everything back inside the RIT bag. We slide the cylinder in from the low pressure side. Line it up on the, the threads up on the block. Thread that in. Inside this low pressure side, there's a strap, a Velcro strap, strap this back in. These hoses just basically just have to make a bend in them. There's a piece of Velcro here on the block that goes attached to a piece of Velcro on the inside. Just fold these back up. You may have to kind of help feed it from the other side. All right, the face piece here. This bottle takes up the majority of this pack here since it's such a large bottle. We have to put the nose cup in first and then slide this mask over the cylinder here. That's pretty important because you gotta make sure this gasket's not smashed because if the gasket's smashed, it won't create a proper seal on our victim. Put this nose cup in there, watch the gasket, work it down the top of this cylinder. And that cylinder just kind of forms over that gasket. All right, now we're gonna go over inspecting and testing like a morning, morning truck checkout. You can make sure all components are clean. We're gonna be checking for wear points on any of the connections, any wear points on the hose, the gaskets. Plug this in. Make sure our bypass is closed. Okay, we're gonna slowly turn on the cylinder. Make sure our two gauges are within 10% of each other. Close this. Then we're gonna slowly open our purge valve and this whistle should sound the 25% remaining to make sure our needle swings. All right, we're gonna talk about hooking up to the regulator on our victim. This is just a quick way to get air to them. We're gonna reach down, we're gonna find his helmet, reach down, find his shoulder strap, grab the connection. Once you get the connection, don't let go. Low pressure, low ball. Make sure your cylinder's on all the way. We pull out our block, take the dust connection off, drape it over your arm so you don't lose it, and have our victim hold their breath. All right, once you make your connection, make sure you give it a good tug and make sure it's good, and we're ready to transport.
All right, we're gonna we're gonna talk about hooking up to the EBSS on our victim here. We're gonna find their head. We're gonna work down, find their bottle, work down to their right side. We're gonna deploy the EBSS. We're gonna drape it over our arms so we don't lose it. Low pressure, low ball. We're gonna pull out our dual EBSS and our rip pack. Then we're gonna connect the female coupling from our victim to the male on our rip pack. And then we're gonna transport. Make sure our connection's good. We're gonna talk about replacing the regulator on our victim. There's three indications that we would do this. They don't have any quick connects on, on them that we can use our rip bag. The regulator is clearly damaged and not functioning, or you think it's the fastest way to provide air to our victim. Make sure the valve is fully open on your rip pack. Low pressure, low ball. Extend our hose. We're gonna hook our mask to it. Verify the connection. Open purge valve, verify that we have air. Okay, we have our victim hold their breath. 12 o'clock position. If he doesn't have enough, if he can't breathe deep enough to engage the breathing mechanism, we can just open up the purge valve to give him air. Then we're gonna secure this to our victim and then we're ready for transport. All right, we're gonna talk about replacing the mask on our victim. This is indicated with three different things. They're wearing a respirator that's not compatible with our rip pack. Their face piece and regular is obviously damaged or they're not wearing a mask at all. Make sure our rip pack, the valve on it is fully open. Low pressure, low ball. Extend our dual out. We're gonna pull our mask out. We're gonna hook up to it. Open the purge valve, make sure that we have air. We're gonna have our second rescuer take this helmet and Nomex off. Okay, I'm gonna open this purge valve to expel any gases. All right, I'm gonna have him pull his mask off. Start with the chin. All right, breathe in. Okay. Make sure our seal is good. The RIC UAC is for emergency use only when your victim is incapacitated within a hazardous atmosphere. We're going to cover the procedure step by step to increase confidence in its use. First, identify the high pressure, high T side. Open the cylinder valve on the RIP pack. For training purposes, leave the valve on the RIP pack closed to prevent a hot transfer. Next, identify the RIC UAC coupling on the respirator's user user's SCBA and remove the protective cap. If the RIC UAC coupling on the respirator appears damaged, do not attempt to connect the RIC UAC airline assembly. Find an alternate method of supplying air. Once you've found the RIC UAC, leave a finger on it as a landmark. A member of the rapid intervention crew must visually inspect the user's respirator before pr proceeding with recharging. Inspect the user's cylinder for dents or gouges in the metal or fiber wrapping and inspect the cylinder valve for signs of damage. Inspect the user's respirator for other damage to hoses or components that might result in a failure when high pressure air is introduced into the system. If there's any suspicion that the cylinder or respirator is not safe, 
find another method of supplying air to the user. Verify that the respirator user's air supply cylinder is properly installed with the cylinder coupling connected to the cylinder. Verify that the cylinder valve on the respirator is fully open. Remove the dust cap coupling on the high pressure air supply hose. Visually inspect the coupling for dirt or damage. Connect the high pressure airline hose by pushing the quick disconnect coupling on the hose assembly onto the RIC UAC coupling of the respirator until quick disconnect sleeves clicks into place. Check the engagement by tugging on the coupling. If the air pressure in the portable air supply is higher than the air pressure in the respirator cylinder, air will immediately begin to flow from the portable air supply cylinder to the respirator cylinder. The remote gauge on the respirator will begin to show an increase in pressure. If at any time during the filling process a leak is detected, immediately discontinue the filling procedure and find another method of supplying air to the respirator user. The air will stop flowing when the respirator SCBA cylinder and the portable air cylinder reach the same pressure. Close the cylinder valve on the portable air supply. When charging is complete, disconnect the high pressure air supply hose from the RIC UAC coupling on the respirator by pulling the coupling sleeve away from the respirator until the coupling disengages. A check valve in the RIC UAC coupling on the respirator will prevent air from flowing out of the SCBA cylinder. After charging is complete, monitor the cylinder pressure on the respirator user's cylinder gauge. If the user's SCBA cylinder becomes depleted before evacuation is complete, repeat the charging process with the portable air supply equipped with a full cylinder and leave the area requiring respiratory protection as quickly as possible. We're going to talk about the pickoff strap and attachments on our RIT pack and packaging our patients. Take this pickoff strap off, attach this side up one side, run underneath their leg, attach here on the other side, grab the golf ball, pull down. Basically, we've just converted our pack. These carabiners here, attach here on their pack, and we're ready to transport our victim. Our new RIT bags don't contain room for rope or tools in it, so we've, we've come up with this RIT search bag here. Inside this front pouch here, we've got two different types of cable cutters. We've got these cable shears here that are made for single multi-strand cables that are found inside a house like coaxial or phone, phone lines. They can also cut rope or webbing. We also have these other mini, like, small bolt cutters in here that have a small notch in them that's designed to hold cables like that's found like an HV, HVAC tubing and drop ceiling. Whenever we're using these tools, try not to use them for training. Um, that way you're not chipping them and tearing them up for in case we need to use them for an emergency. Also inside here, we've got a mega mover tarp. Tells you what side needs to go up on it. It's got 14 handles throughout it. It's rated at 1,800 pounds. Whenever we're lifting with it, try to lift straight across from each other and not cross the handles because they tend to break. This main compartment here, we've got 200 feet of 5.9 millimeter RIT search rope. It's a Technor and polyester blend. It's also got one strand of reflective material in it so we can see it in the, in the dark. It's got a carabiner here on the end that we can use to wrap around something on the front porch like um, like railing or mailbox or something like that. Lastly, on the strap here, we've got an Anderson Rescue multi-loop strap that we can use. Uh, later on, you'll see some videos on how to deploy it. All right, we're going to talk about the Anderson Rescue multi-loop strap. We've got three different techniques that we can use on a downed firefighter. First technique, so we're going to clip into his waist belt here. 
run this around his leg and we can clip back in here start the drag if we got the dexterity and if you got the room you can grab another loop on this make it a little bit tighter on his legs we can drag from there or what we can do is we can run through a shoulder strap here you can drag him this way or we can grab two bites and then we can start dragging him this way All right, we need to take a down firefighter like upstairs. We basically create a seat harness as we can do. So we're going to clip back in this belt. Go around both his legs. Clip them both. Maybe we can grab both of these bites here. One firefighter can and one can grab his shoulder strap. We can pick him up and carry him upstairs. The third and final is we're going to basically create a... Uh, class three harness so if we need to lift him vertically so we're going to run back through the legs girth hitch onto the carabiner loosen up the shoulder straps a little bit hook to his shoulder straps tighten these back up basically taking his his waist belt completely out of the equation create a class three harness and vertically lift him up All right, along with all the new RIT stuff that we're getting, we've also upgraded our Rogers Pack bags here. They're still blue and they'll be labeled as well. We've been using this for about a year now on Rescue 2. In the front pocket here is all the hardware, carabiner and your strap and everything. And as a reminder, I have firefighter J-Rod here demonstrate how this is set up. So we're gonna go above the window, we're gonna hook our carabiner, we're gonna bring our strap back down. It's gonna essentially create a two to one. Put that on the shoulders of our victim, hook it up. Someone can come down here, foot the ladder. You can put wraps on the rungs here if you're worried about friction. Then you can let them down. There we go.